Thank you, Pacho Man. Welcome to day one. Breakfast with Bob from Kona and Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas as fuels go longer. Hoka Let's Fly, Deborah Wetsuits, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, the original triathlon brand, Quintana Roo, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenge Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, three-time Olympian, Olympic silver medalist, Lisa Norden. How about a round of applause for Lisa? How you Thank doing, you. Liz? It's good to be here. Finally back here. Uh, finally back here. It's been a long year, right? <laughs> it has been a long year. Uh, we just saw each other at Roth. Right, Challenge Roth, you got fifth there. And I look at you and I always say, how many times you won the time trial championships in Sweden? Five, Yeah, I think, yeah. Right. <laughs> and last year here, you got a, a, a draft, was it a drafting, a blocking, or what do you still know? No, you don't know. No, it was a, a drafting going up Harvey. It's an uphill drafting penalty. Have you ever gotten anything like that? Have you ever gotten a penalty before? Uh, once back in 2013. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A long time ago. A long ago. time ago, yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you... It was you like dinosaurs on the course. Yeah. That's how old I am in triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you when you got into it? Uh, 17, so I was actually a late starter. Yes. Which means I'm very old today. You are not very old. You don't know very <laughs> old. So you got into it, and what got you into it? Was it cycling first? Uh, well, so I was a horse rider. Oh. I loved sport in school. Uh, and then my mom wanted to do this crazy holiday before I got old and boring and got a job and started studying and all this. So she wanted to ride a bike to Italy. And we live in Sweden. From Sweden. From Sweden, yeah. So we, that's when we bought two bikes, two road bikes. Uh, we had an old tent, a garden tent, uh, and then we bought maps and we started cycling down to Italy. You and your mom? And Me and my mom. And you're what, 17 now? Uh, yeah, it was right after... Um, high school? High school. Yeah, 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 like before we started college, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think I was 15, 16. Uh, and that was my first like, you know, experience on a road bike to actually have like gears and you know like a bent handlebar yes and like it was looked really cool and you loved it right away i loved it it was like it was a very different experience from what i view as cycling today yes so we were cycling maybe 100 kilometers a day and that was very far for us uh, that was a, f a full day of cycling basically uh, and it took us 11 days to get down to italy and when i got back home to my hometown they had a small triathlon just like a fundraiser and yes. i joined that because you know basically i'm a cycling professional i've been cycling my bike all summer yeah everyone can swim breaststroke and you know run how hard can you, it be you're right you fake that yeah yeah and you did <laughs> i did and i got second and i won a pair of socks and i thought this is like a pretty cool sport <laughs> <laughs> i want a pair of socks i mean probably like a three pack you know oh so you got yeah. a three pack of socks <laughs> oh my god you're there forever so uh, that was, and yeah. I swam breaststroke. Yes. Uh, I, I had no previous experience of triathlon. Triathlon at the time in Sweden was, in you know, Sweden is a country far north and it's very cold. We right. don't have a lot of summer. Uh, triathlon, the only thing that I read of was the Ironman in Hawaii. And this was quite far from an Ironman experience. It was a sprint race. Um, but it was such a nice sport and it, like, it got to me straight away. It was, um, in Sweden we call it like a, a forehead bone you need a thick forehead bone which is basically like a, a backbone so if you have like if you have the heads for it yes it's a lot about training it's about willing to take pain willing to do the job willpower and coming from yeah. like horse riding when it's more like you know being judged getting numbers having a cool last name having a lot of money i love triathlon because it was so simple really simple and it was all like down to my willingness to do the work if you suffer you will do well yeah so that that's how i came to love triathlon but i, I could not swim freestyle i was 16 years old uh, and there was like no way even like going to the olympics was on my mind i just wanted to you know stay active and do sport right. and, and that kind of whole being an athlete came in much later and so when did somebody did somebody identify you and say from from sweden uh, triathlon organization and say <laughs> we think you would be good to potentially well, be an Olympian? So when I won my first junior Swedish champs, yes. that was my last year junior, they actually told me, you know, if you're not a swimmer from the start, Lisa, you're never going to learn how to swim, so you're never going to make it. You're not going to make it in the sport? No, no. A and you hey, seem you're not a swimmer. You're not you a swimmer. No, you're not a swimmer. You've got to be with the leaders. How, how can you make it if you haven't grown up swimming, you know? Right. <laughs> But you proved them wrong. <laughs> well, it took a lot of work. Um, we moved down to Sydney 
Sydney has, you know, beaches, Bondi Beach. Lots of swimmers, uh, lots, warm lots, water. Yeah, yeah. So I was very lucky to find a coach who decided to help this small Swedish girl uh, to pursue triathlon and teach her how to swim properly. And when did you get to the point where it was 2008 was your first Olympics? Getting, getting there. I mean, when did you make the team and realize, oh my God, I'm going to the Olympics? So I had quite a, a rapid progression. So 2003, I was 10th at Junior Worlds. Yes. 2004, I was home watching the Athens Olympics. And there was like this little thing starting in my mind that, yes. you know, maybe one day. Uh, 2007, I won under 23 Worlds. 2008, uh, I was on the podium for my first World Cup race. Um, so, you know, it's... It was a pretty rough. Yeah, like, I, 2007, I was on the podium. 2008, I qualified for the team. Right. And I was my first World Cup podium was with Vanessa Fernandez and Emma Snowsill, <laughs> and that was in the beginning <laughs> of 2008. And the winner and the silver medalist at the Athens um, Beijing Olympics 2008 was Emma Snowsill and Vanessa Fernandez. So for me, that was like the the showing that maybe I'm one on day the podium I could make it. Them. You know. Yes, I'm on the podium. <laughs> With the, with medalists, yeah, that's yeah. the real deal. So, wh what was the 2008 experience like? Uh, it was cr it was Beijing, right? It was crazy. Yes. Um, as the first time Olympian, just to be in the village uh, with all these sporting stars, you have you know the tennis players, Usain Bolt. We yeah. went to watch his world record at the stadium when he won it later, and just to see all the Swedish superstars. You know, yeah. I grew up with watching on TV um, that I had as idols when I was a kid. Yes. So that was, that was incredible. And I think it also set me up for the London Olympics. So you go, they won, you're young, you don't have a lot of pressure. You go to the village, you have fun, you go and do the race, you learn about the setup and how it works. And then you come back four years later and like, okay, now I'm ready to race. You're ready to race. And going into that, did you feel it would come down to you and Nicola Spirig? No, like, there was a lot of strong girls at the time. Yes, there were. Uh, and I think there was a lot of other names too we were looking at. Nicola was, you know, super strong and that's always coming into form when the Olympics kind of came around the corner. Uh, so we identified her as one of the main competitors. But there was also, I think it was maybe five, six of us that could win a medal that day. And take us through that race because that race, the closest race in history, right? Photo finish for the gold and silver. It was uh, nine thousandths of a second. So I think they actually changed the rules afterwards. Uh, we split medals. <laughs> Would you both have gotten gold based yeah. on that? Oh, yeah, yeah, today. So you can probably just go over there and have a, give you your gold medal. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit too late now. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is no, it was, a, it was a good race. It was one of my best races so far. Oh, I'm sure. Um, the run we ended up running is quite a big front group. Uh, and then it kind of trickled down as the run went on. Um, at the end of... The last lap, I think there was four or five of us. Yes. And we knew it was going to come down to sprint. There was Sarah True. Yes. Uh, was in there. She's here now as well. Uh, Ali Haug was running the exact same, t same time as me and Nicola, but she was in the second group. And Danielle Arif so was in that race too, uh, She right? was also in that race, yeah. So there's a lot of us who have a lot of history all the way back. Daniela was also in the Beijing Olympics. Yes. Uh, we were training together back then, so there's a lot of girls who's been around for a long time. Uh, but that sprint, sprint was uh, insane and intense. Uh, I find the momentum coming into the blue carpet and you could kind of sense that I was getting closer and closer and closer. And if you haven't watched it, you can watch it. And yet, like today, I have people messaging me and sending photos. And it's like, I can't believe, like, you didn't win this race or they didn't split the medal because it was, depending on what angle you're seeing it from, it's, it's really, really close. So while you guys were, did you guys both collapse at the finish? No, I was, I was celebrating. You thought you won? I wa no, I won a medal at the Olympic Games. Oh, okay. You know, so not to celebrate. It didn't matter. <laughs> no, you knew I was gold or silver was going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. I was over the moon. Yeah, it's funny you say that because McKeeley Jones felt the same way. She lost in a sprint at the 2000 Games. And she says, I didn't lose the gold. I won the silver. Yeah. I was here to win a medal. And I won like, a medal. You come into the village and they have this, uh, this TV running the whole time with all the different events. Like yeah. there's so many events going on at the same time. Uh, they have no commentary, so it's just like quiet sports from different arenas. But what you see every single day is people standing on the podium with flowers and with the Olympic anthem going on in the background. And they are the three winners. Right. You don't see the others, just three, these three, <laughs> and they are winners. And for me to be one of the three to win, I think Sweden had seven medals in the Olympics uh, 2012. So to be one out of seven to come home with an Olympic medal is unreal. You know, you get messages from the king and from the prime minister and... Every know, it's, media it's a outlet, thing. right? In a small country, it makes a big difference. Every media outlet yeah. was, was covering yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and how long was it from 
okay, there's a ton of media, everybody's following me to now I got to figure out what I'm doing. Am I, am I going to go back for another Olympics? Was there a thought at that point of going longer distance or was it always, hey, I got a silver this time, next year I want to, next time I want to go back and get a gold? Uh, we actually, I took a bit of a break. Uh, I went to Boulder, trained with Crowy yeah. uh, for some time and, and did some uh, half Ironman uh, distance races. I wanted to do Ironman World Champs. Yes. That's where I got the drafting penalty. Um, uh, yeah. But to be honest, at the time, 70.3 was boring to me. I came out from the intense Olympic WTS series racing. And I remember I was in Syracuse. I was fourth overall starting the run with the men's and I had a 20 minute lead. And I was like, this is, it's, it's not exciting. It's not fun. And I had a shit race. It didn't feel so good. And everyone was like, oh, you're so good. You won it. I was like, yeah, it didn't like appeal to me. Even, even getting the silver and having someone beat you was better than yeah, winning this other one. Yeah, because you're like, in the WTS races, you race for every second right. every position and it's so intense and when you do that well you're on top of the world it's insane um but to come and do like you know 70.3 2013 it's not the same level as it is today it's today no. you go out to 70.3 race and it's, it's all the packed, olympic yeah you know, like yes. yeah everyone is there so today is exciting and it's great to watch but 2013 it wasn't so i didn't really find my footing mm. i also was carrying a lot of injuries a lot of i guess fatigue from from the Olympics, All those years, uh, yeah. a lot of underfueling, and like my body wasn't in the best shape really. Uh, so I was like, I had a lot of injuries, and it took a long time to figure stuff out. When you look at your long distance career, what do you look at as your best race? Um, I, oh, it's it's crazy because I done. I, I looked at the um, the list of the amount of Kona races people have done, and Daniela Riff, she has done more Ironman races here than I have done Iron distance races in, in my your career, whole career. In my career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I feel like every race, it's like it's a new race and I'm improving. So every race is sometimes like the best I have done, but then there's another race and I do that differently or better. Yes. And I would say like my first race was unreal because it was, it was my first race and never done one before and I did it really well. So considering the preparation, it was awesome. But then like Kalmar is probably my best put together race. Um, I think the race here last year was probably my highlight so far. L last year here, even with the penalty. Even with the penalty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're, I mean, that's the drafting penalty. You still went, you got fifth place. And when you put 54-41, 4.42 bike, and that's with the penalty. Yeah. Yeah, you were right there. Yeah. But what I've always seen with you is there's no reason that you're not running sub three hours at one of these races. That, that, that to me, 257, 258, you're winning these things. I know it's a, it's a big question I've been asking myself as well. You know, I've been, I used to beat Annie on the track. Right. I used to run quicker than Sarah True. I used to run quicker than Daniela. Daniela, <laughs> yeah. on the track, right? With all those and guys. And I ran at uh, 33.21 10K I know. <laughs> in a triathlon. So that should be 255 <laughs> at the least. But you know what happens? Like you get a lot of injuries. Um, your body movement changes. Right. Your body remembers pain. And I think... One thing we're good at, at athletes is to adapt. Our bodies adapt to the situation. Right. It tries to solve stuff. But it's also negative because it tries to solve stuff and it does it in the wrong way. And then you start moving in a different way. So you get other ways of overloading your muscles, other injuries. Yes. So for me, I had to like detangle myself because I started moving the wrong way. And running wasn't natural. I didn't get it for free anymore. Right. Running done well should be easy yes. like we all watched Annie and she's like floating <laughs> away exactly. and it's not like she's muscling and working hard so this year actually we went back with my team doing a lot of basic stuff just to get the body firing again and yes. trying to get the right um, right patterns of movement so I'm, I'm working a lot to solve the puzzles I would love to run like a 2012 Lisa Norden version of myself uh, and hopefully I can reinvent myself and get back to that level. You know what's cool is there's really no reason you can't go faster now than, than you did two, three years ago in this sport, right? Because this age is a number, but you're, you're still so, like you said, you've done less fulls than, than Annie has done Kona's. There are less fulls total, right, than yeah. she has. So I know you can get faster. There's no question. And being on a podium here is sort of a something you you know you should be on the podium and you seriously could win this race. Like everyone who goes into the race has to have that belief, I think, to make it a really good race. 
I think what's special with Kona, like you can look at the numbers and look at the try rating and like you could submit your training. As, as Chelsea said that, like you can submit your training, but that's not what you're going to get back, right? Right. Uh, and you can deserve something, but it's not necessarily what you're going to get. Uh, and Kona is such a tough day. So for me, I can, if I put together my best race, maybe some other girls will have a difficult day and that would open up a different scenario for me. If everyone goes out and do Unreal, then it's going to be really difficult to be on the podium. Because right. the level now is crazy. probably the best we've ever seen, ever. I would say, on this island. Love it. So, and I love that. Like, that's the racing I love. That's why I moved away from 7.3 and why I went back to WTS. And now I'm here and I have this intense racing, which is thrilling and a lot of fun. Love it. How about a round of applause for Lisa Norton? Lisa, have a great race. Pacho Thank man, you. take us out. <laughs> Pacho Man!